All right. South Carolina senator and presidential candidate Tim Scott has a brilliant idea for the people that we're seeing screaming in support of the atrocities that we saw in Israel, the people that we're seeing tonight on Wall Street uh, with, with these signs. And the senator joins us now. Uh, sir, I, I can't believe in lower Manhattan we're seeing signs celebrating uh, the Hamas attacks, but we are. What's your plan for, for these people that, uh, that are just these atrocious people? Yeah, it's, it's just unbelievable to see the level of hate and disgusting behavior from people in our country. And I would say to every single person who's come to our country on a student visa who find themselves protesting on college campuses, when they're shouting for Jewish genocide, when they're advocating for mass murder, and when they're supporting terrorism, go home. We should deport these kids on college campuses who are encouraging for genocide, who are encouraging murder, and who are supporting terrorism. We have no place on our college campuses. And frankly, for those colleges and universities who cannot figure that out, we should remove the federal funds. We Americans do not want our tax dollars supporting terrorism. We do not want our tax dollars giving a platform for genocide. We refuse to use American tax dollars for those who believe in mass murder, especially on university and college campuses where those administrations refuse to yeah. do so because they're more interested in the tuition than they are truth. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of tolerance in this country. Uh, we, we tolerate a lot. Uh, we tolerate a lot of self-hate in this country, more than any other country in the world. But a line has to be drawn at some point. And, and I've seen people in the neighborhood that I live in right now, and I'm glad I'm not there right now, uh, are, are walking around with signs, a, a huge sign uh, that says they want to commemorate, they want to remember uh, the attackers, the, the martyrs uh, of Palestine is what they're calling them. And they're, and they're celebrating these people uh, on our streets in this country. I agree with you. Get out. What are you doing here in the first place? You love it so much like that? Get out and go enjoy it yourself. Um, I think Americans watch this country grow increasingly ideologically warped. I doubt that they thought it was as bad as it is. And it does seem like a lot of this, as you just said, is coming from our universities. Well, there's no doubt that when you look at the brass tacks, what we learned over the last several months and, frankly, the last two weeks is that the radical left, they're willing to weaponize race, they're willing to weaponize any single issue, any group of people to maintain their political power. That's why they refuse to bring the squad in and say either you get in line or we expel you from the House, take away your committee assignments. They're so afraid of speaking the truth to the squad and to their anti-Semitic individuals in their party that they're just silent. Yeah. Silence makes you complicit with the very comments that we hear ringing around the nation. I'm having Jewish friends, yeah. business owners coming in, looking for ways to secure and fortify their businesses. The attacks on our Jewish brothers and sisters has to stop. Yeah. And you shouldn't have to be Jewish to stand in the gap for common sense, decency, and for truth. Yeah. That's America. We stand for freedom. Yeah. And, and, and all of that emboldens the actors that we're seeing right now. I mean, when you have Rashida Tlaib up there still lying about the hospital attack, uh, it's despicable. And that's a, that's a congresswoman in this country. I still can't believe that. I want to show this moment here I, on this show. I always give credit where it's due, no matter what side of politics it comes from. Uh, this one goes to with a nod to our State Department spokesman today who had a fantastic answer after what I thought was the most ridiculous question asked at the White House today. Take a listen to this. The president went further to say that innocents will die and that this is the price of the war. You also said that. I have indeed. Yeah. Don't you think this is insensitive? They're being very harsh criticism about it. For example, the Council of American Islamic Relations said it was deeply disturbed and called on the president to apologize. Would the president apologize and no. does he regret saying something no. like that? About what's harsh, what's him? harsh is the way Hamas is using people as human shields. What's harsh is taking a couple of hundred hostages and leaving families in, uh, anxious, waiting and worrying to figure out uh, where their loved ones are. What's harsh is dropping in on a music festival and slaughtering a bunch of young people just trying to enjoy an afternoon. I could go on and on. That's what's harsh. 
That's a great answer. And, you know, and that's an answer to a question from a reporter that's trying to guilt trip the White House into condemning Israel for its response to the barbarism that we saw about two and a half weeks ago. What a ridiculous question. Well, I, I give you kudos for bringing that to the attention of conservative listeners who think that the White House has completely lost their mind in so many other areas. Yeah. It is good to see this administration take a stand for common sense. You should say to those same folks that Iran, the greatest state sponsor of terrorism, stands there on American soil and says to our nation, if you allow for the Jewish people, for the state of Israel to go into Gaza— there's going to be consequences yeah. for America. Having the Iranian foreign minister say that on our soil deserves a consequence for the entire nation yeah. of Iran. If you threaten us, you should meet with the same consequence, but multiplied by two. Well said. Senator Tim Scott running for president with a fantastic plan for the Hamas lovers that are here on visas. Get out. Sir, thank you so much. We appreciate it.